we now turn our attention to golf at the PGA Tour this week. Um, two events of note, one not so glamorous, one very glamorous. There's obviously the Hero Challenge going on uh, with Tiger Woods allegedly making his return to competitive golf. The world 898 in the world. It'll be interesting to see how this Hall of Famer returns. Um, I think he'll just be looking to get it around and uh, not embarrass himself. Um, I know he's known for a winning mentality. Maybe he has aspirations to win the tournament. When you're a winner, that's often the mentality winners take into tournaments, but maybe he'll also take it easy, but in mind he's been out for so long. But my initial focus will go on to uh, the other tournament going on this week. as uh, the Shriners Hospitals for Children Open. Uh, this tournament uh, is lacking some of the big names who are in the Hero Challenge, chasing a big pot of money. But I think there's some value in there. Um, we've got Tony Finau going off at 16-1 to 1 as the favourite. Uh, it's a fairly big price for a favourite in golf tournaments. Um, but usually those shorter prices that are available at the head of the market are usually for the big, big names, the major winners, the Premier League players, if you like. Um, but yeah, you've got Tony Finau, 16 to 1. You've got Patrick Cantley, Webb Simpson, 20 to 1. Former US Open champion, Chesson Hadley, 25 to 1. And Irban Lahiri, 28 to 1. Uh, the first one that caught my eye was Gary Woodland at 28 to 1, someone we've supported on this channel. Big hitter, uh, big potential, uh, which hasn't been realised yet. Not as if he's a youngster. He's been around a while, but not sure he's reached his uh, potential as of yet. But I've looked past Woodland in favour of going for some real value this week. I think in a tournament like this with a lot of the big names missing, you can sometimes find some numbers, bigger numbers, where players are good value relative to other players' chances in the field. I think it's wide open this week. I think we might get a surprise this week. I think there was a funny winner last year, wasn't there? Not a funny winner, but a, a, a surprising winner. I think it was Rod Pampling last year. I don't think anyone, many people had uh, backed Rod Pampling that week, but he picked up the tournament. So it's an open field. Um, we might as well go for some bigger numbers. I'm going to start it off with a big number. We usually start a bit shorter, around the 25s, 28s, but we're going to go straight in at 40 to 1 this week with Bubba Watson. And I've said it before, often these times uh, these days you get Bubba Watson at bigger numbers he's you know multiple masters champion he is a big hitter he has a marvellous short game um, when he's at numbers like this and feels like this I just like to roll the dice I think he's too good a player um, even regardless of form in a way even if he's in bad form players like this they can have a good week his swing is big his swing is sometimes erratic but also sometimes just as equally he can tee it up on a Thursday and uh, be in form and someone who hits the ball so far you know, <laughs> if they get it vaguely right, they're dangerous, especially with his short game. So we're going to take Bubba Watson, 40 to 1. Uh, these selections are a fifth of the odds based on seven places. Um, going further down the list, you've got Bayung Hun An, 40 to 1. Luke List, 40 to 1. Martin Laird is 50 to 1. I notice some people like to, uh, um, you know, mention Martin Laird. Uh, he's not someone I've really gone for. I'm not going to go for him this week, but I'm going to monitor him. He's a name I've heard around. People mention him as a solid performer, but he's there at 50 to 1. We'll take Bryson DeChambeau at 60 to 1. Former winner for us on this channel. A very talented player. Bit of a quirky um, outlook on the game, but he's a young he's a young upstart. He's a top player. He's going to do a lot in the game. In a field like this, well, you know, if you think he's going to do well, why not this week in, in a field where a lot of the stellar names are missing? So 60 to 1. Um, we'll take Bryce and DeChambeau each way. Uh, looking down at this, JB Holmes, I think we backed him. Going back a couple of weeks didn't do much for us, so I'm going to look past him on this occasion. I'm going to go for one time PGA Tour winner William McGirt at 60 to 1. He was a tidy player. One of these players that, um, you know, when the fields lack some of the Premier players, he sometimes comes to the fore. He's a very consistent game. He's pretty experienced, he's 38 years old now. Um, last time out, I think he put in a tied 25th. I'm not saying that's amazing, but it's pretty tidy. It's, it's not messy, he made the cut comfortably and, you know, top 25 finish. You can't really um, complain too much about it. So he's obviously getting it around OK and at 60 to 1 in this field, I think it's worth a gamble. Um, we look down the field, there's Billy Horshaw, 66 to 1, a winner for us in the last 12 months, but not been in good form of late. Um, could he come back to form in a field like this? 
quite possibly, but I'm not going to take a chance on him this week. Chris Kirk, 70 to 1. Scott Piercy. David Lingamath. We've supported him a lot on this channel. Um, 70 to 1 is a good number. Um, I'm going to look past him on this occasion. I don't think he's done anything too impressive of late. Harris English, 80 to 1. I'm pretty sure he missed a cut last week. Some people are saying look out for Kevin Nah. I think he's won this tournament uh, on this course before. It's 35 to 1. Some people are looking at that. I'm, my next pick, my last pick for this tournament is going to be for Jimmy Walker, US PGA champion, a major winner, a steady player, a composed player. In this field, he's, he's a class act, you know, relative to the other guys here, he's a danger. You've got Webb Smith going off at 20, Webb Smith, Webb Simpson going off at 20 to 1. Jimmy Walker out at 66 to 1. I think that disparity is a bit insulting to Jimmy Walker. You know, he's a US PGA champion, he's a Ryder Cup player. I think there's value there, and I'm going to take it. 66 to 1, it's a nice juicy number each way. Seven places, a fifth of the odds. Um, yeah, I think that'll be that'll be it for me in this tournament. I think there's four um, solid names. So we're going to take Jimmy Walker, 66 to 1. We're going to take Bryson DeChambeau, 60 to 1. Bubba Watson, 40 to 1. I think I think I fancy I fancy Bubba Watson to do reasonably well this week in this field. I mean, relative to the other players, he do, he does stand out. So hopefully, you know, he can get something going and put on a decent performance. The last selection was William McGurt, sixty to one. We're gonna have a quick look at the Hero Challenge. Um, it's a different type of betting proposition. This is I think it's a field of eighteen. It's, Tiger Woods is the host, I think, and. It's a different type of challenge, this one, betting-wise. The odds are a lot shorter. Um, I think they've got Spieth going off as the favourite at about 11-2. to two. He's 5-1 to one on bet for Justin Thomas, 11-2. to two. Understandable. Uh, just ridiculous form he's been in. Absolutely sensational. Dustin Johnson, 6-1. to one. Bit of a capitulation last week. He was leading the tournament by four or five strokes. And Justin Rose snuck up on him with his steady game. We, we've forgotten about Rose recently, and... You know, he's come back in a big way there to let us, you know, remind us of what a good player he is. You know, snitching that tournament last week uh, off Dustin Johnson. We've got Ricky Fowler, 9-1. to one. Hideki Matsuyama, 12-1. to one. Jason Day, 14-1. to one. Day, and I'm not really looking to support him at the moment. I don't I don't see enough of the old him, the day of like, a, you know, a couple of years ago, 18 months ago. He doesn't seem to be that force that he was. Mark Leishman, 14 to 1, been in tremendous form recently. I couldn't put you off that one. Brooks Kepka, who was leading the tournament last week, I think 16 to 1, that's, a, that's an interesting figure. That's definitely one I'd look at. Uh, going further down the field, looking for a bit of value. Pat Reed, 22 to 1. You can see the odds are smaller, where there's only 18 people. They're giving you a fifth of the odds, four places. So, you know, I think that's a fair, fair each way terms. Um, I'd probably pin a field like this. There's not many players. I'd probably look at two. And the two that stand out, Brooks Kepka, 16 to 1. Um, I'd probably look at that one each way. And down the list, I think Matt Kuchar at 25 to 1. He did all right last week. Um, I wouldn't look at Tiger Woods at 33 to 1. I don't know why that's so short. <laughs> Watch him go and win the tournament now, the legend. About 33 to 1, I think. Bear in mind he hasn't played forever. He's 898th in the world and he's not sure about his game and recently talking about potentially packing the game in if his uh, health, you know, doesn't improve physically. Um, you know, I think that's a bit of a big number, a short number, 33 to 1. I'd want a lot more. You've got Alex Noren at 28 to 1 as well. Not too bad. I'd take Kucha 25 to 1. Um, and I would take Brooks Kepka at 16 to 1. You know, that concludes uh, my picks and tips uh, this week. Please comment on anyone you think who has a chance. Comment generally on the golfing world. Um, you know, it's always interesting to hear uh, any stories people have or any opinions people have on who has a chance in these tournaments upcoming. Um, like and subscribe as usual, and I'll see you next time.